The U.S. Department of Justice and the ATF have taken another step into straight-up tyranny. With the recently published proposed rule for stabilizing braces, they intend on turning millions of people into felons. This is not a joke. I'm not exaggerating. This is our reality, and we're going to break it down. But first, we got to pay the bills. Go buy some coffee. Just because I'm addicted to caffeine does not mean that I have to settle for sh coffee. Blackout coffee. F yeah. To get 10% off your entire order, go to blackoutcoffee.com and use the code TGC. That's blackoutcoffee.com slash TGC and use the code TGC. Welcome back to The Gun Collective. My name is John Patton and you are watching The Fight for Gun Rights. This is a show all about Second Amendment news and we would love it if you got subscribed, followed us on Instagram, or just left a like on the video. Now, the ATF and the current nonsense. Before we get too far into this, I want to say that there are over 120 pages of BS to wade through and I'm doing my best to try and distill all of that down for you guys to keep this short. On June 7th, 2021, ATF submitted a proposed rule known as 2021R dash zero eight. It's titled Factoring Criteria for Firearms with Attached Stabilizing Braces. The basics are that the DOJ and ATF are looking to amend regulations to clarify when a rifle is intended to be fired from the shoulder, because somehow you can regulate intent, that's weird, and they included a bunch of factors for doing so that would determine whether or not guns with these accessories would be classified as short-barreled rifles under the NFA. Oh boy. Okay, so let's get started by going over the proposed worksheet that ATF has created for determining whether or not a gun is, as they put it, trying to circumvent the NFA. Right at the top is the first big indicator that they don't give a about your rights and that they are indeed trying to make you a felon. It says, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives reserves the right to preclude classification as a pistol with a stabilizing brace for any firearm that achieves an apparent qualifying score but is an attempt to make a short barrel rifle and circumvent the GCA or NFA. What this basically means is even if your gun falls under the pistol with a brace side of things, we can use our magical ATF words and say that it is instead an NFA item. Wonderful. Off to a good start. From there, we see that the prerequisites are that the weapon must weigh at least 64 ounces and have an overall length between 12 and 26 inches. That is a lot of guns. I will resist the urge to make the I am the weapon jokes. <laughs> Moving on from there is the accessory characteristics section. This is where we see some of the most arbitrary, absolutely nonsensical gack. We have the accessory design section, which seems to determine through unknown factors whether or not the brace is similar to a shoulder stock. Because how dare you use a quick detach sling, right? Or have some kind of adjustability. Not allowed to have that. Then we have the rear surface area section. This is where they determine whether or not using zero actual quantifiable data, the surface area on the back of your brace and how it equates to the ability to shoulder the device. For the record ATF, I can shoulder a pen, a normal sized bottle of ketchup, and a bicycle. So go f yourself. It moves on to the adjustability section. This is a fairly self-explanatory thing. It also is amazing that you are penalized for having a gun that can be used by different people with differently sized arms. Then we have the stabilizing support section. This is where ATF, again, using no real quantifiable data, determines whether or not something is a stabilizing support. You're penalized here for having a folding device, having a fin-type brace with no strap, or having a cuff-type brace that fails to wrap around your arm the whole way. If your gun scored four or more points on that page, it's magically an SBR. But if it was three or less, you move on to the next page. That's where things get even more ridiculous. At the top, we have the length of pull section. Again, more arbitrary nonsense. If the length of pull is over 13 and a half inches, you're screwed. So you better shorten your arms if you need or want a healthy length of pull. Next is the attachment method. 
This covers how the brace is attached to the gun. According to this, if you use anything besides a pistol buffer tube, it's heading towards a no-no method. And that makes sense if you're an idiot. The method in which a brace attaches to a gun has zero to do with how the brace is actually being used, at least here in actual logic land. Moving on, stabilizing brace modification slash configurations. And for some reason, stabilizing brace is again in quotes. Probably because they are implying that braces are stocks. This is one of those manipulation techniques that I've pointed out in other videos, where they're saying something in a specific way to get someone to think their way. This section covers straps. If you take the strap off, you're a felon. If you modify a shoulder stock to act as a brace, you're a felon, even though no one does that. That's not a thing. Also, if you use an elastic strap, which would actually make the strap work better, you get tyranny points. And last, but certainly not least, the peripheral accessories section. This covers the other parts attached to the gun along with the brace. This is almost a work of art. <laughs> According to this section, if you have a secondary grip, a scope with a shorter eye relief, or a gun that is over 120 ounces, you're a felon. Believe it or not, jail right away. How dare you buy a heavy gun? You felon? <laughs> not only that, but I can almost guarantee that there are pistols out there that weigh more than that without any other modifications. And now suddenly, those are being determined to be too heavy to fire with one hand and therefore are SBRs and you're a felon. Not to mention additional tyranny points are added for having a hand stop, backup sights, or no sights at all, a red dot with a flip to the side magnifier, or a bipod. Which is really funny because this existed as a factory option, and by this sheet could be argued to be an SBR. At the bottom, we are met with a score of four points or more indicating a shoulder-fired design. Points determine your intent somehow, not actual reality. Arbitrary points on a worksheet created by unelected officials are the difference between you being a felon or going about your business. But wait, it gets even worse. The ATF acknowledges in the proposed rule that this would affect over 17,000 FFLs and have an impact, therefore, on thousands upon thousands of jobs and cost millions and millions of dollars. Not only that, but they say this would affect at least eight brace manufacturers, of which at least three would be forced to go out of business. I can't think of another scenario where it would be okay for some random government agency to significantly impact that many small businesses. It seems that the only reason for this shift in regulations is not to have an impact on crime or anything like that, but rather to try and prevent people from circumventing the NFA. That's what it says in this rule. It has nothing to do with affecting real life, just that you guys aren't listening to our bull rules. Yeah, exactly. That says to me that they are super pissed that they aren't getting the tax dollars that they think they're entitled to, and they're not in control. And this is all predicated on the fact that somehow, magically, a gun with a brace is actually an SBR, which it isn't. So how do they propose that you comply with this stuff? They've laid out different scenarios by which someone could comply with this crap. Option one, turn in your gun to ATF. L-O-L-F that. Option two is to convert the gun into what they call a long-barreled rifle. That's Okay, I guess if they're short, it must be long. They did some cost analysis for you and determined that the average cost you might have to spend converting your gun would be about $410 and buying a barrel and a handguard. Somehow, because you have to buy those. Over 400 bucks on a gun that you bought with a product that was legal for eight years. Imagine if you have like three or four braced pistols and you gotta convert them all somehow. Option three is to register the gun under the NFA, which would cost individuals $200 per item. Now, imagine you run an FFL and have a bunch of these on hand. You would have to pay the fee to register all of them. According to them, the total industry impact would be over $51 million. Option four, permanently remove or alter affected stabilizing braces currently in circulation and foregone future sales. <laughs> they estimate the cost of this lost value would be over $440 million. What I find fascinating about the entire thing 
is that there's no plan for enforcement, only compliance. They have no idea how they're going to enforce this. They have no clue. Think of how many millions of guns exist with a brace on them. How do you round up millions of gun owners that will inevitably not comply? Simple answer is you don't. This is unenforceable. And it attacks a massive chunk of the US population for no reason other than to push you farther under the boot of tyranny. In terms of both economic impact and criminal impact, this would literally gut the gun industry. That is exactly, that is exactly what they want to happen. Think of this like taking a belt sander to shark's teeth. They want us to be weaker as a whole, and between this and the incomplete lower proposed rule and probably some other nonsense up their sleeve, that is how they want to do it. So, how do we fight back? Well, there's a link in the description that will allow you to submit comments to ATF about this when they open that up. There was some confusion about that when the other BS rule that they proposed about incomplete firearms came up. There's a lag time. They don't open the comments as soon as they announce it for whatever reason. Which, by the way, if you haven't yet, you need to submit a comment about that as well, please. So basically, keep an eye on the ATF website for a link to submit a comment to pop up. And while you wait, submit one for the other proposed rule that we covered already. Not only that, but you need to spread the word to every gun owner you know about why this is unacceptable behavior and we should not stand for it. I also really want to see the gun industry getting involved in this. There are hundreds and hundreds of companies making a boatload of money off of AR pistols, AK pistols, pistol braces, etc. And I want to see all of them getting involved. So if you are watching this and you work in the gun industry, put your money where your mouth is. I'm tired of you guys standing idly by while this kind of stuff happens. Get involved publicly. Guys, I understand that there's a lot of crap going on right now, a lot of legislation being thrown around. This is a big deal. I think I may try to get the inventor of the stabilizing brace to come on TGC again. Alex is a friend. Uh, I'll see if I can get him for an interview uh, about all of this. So if you guys want to see that, be sure to let me know in the comments. Also, while you're there, fire off your thoughts about this proposed rule, because I want to talk about it. I want to know what you guys are thinking. If you haven't already, please like and share the video. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon.